I have an original Game Boy and in this video I'm going to test it how Nintendo would have wanted me to test it. And to do this there is a certain game cartridge you can use which is the repair cartridge that was used in Nintendo service centers way back then. Of course nowadays there isn't any Game Boy repair service centers anymore by Nintendo. These are surprisingly hard to find and they are very expensive. So on screen now I will show you some pictures of what the repair cartridges look like. There was many versions, many revisions with many features added throughout the versions. You might be asked why am I only showing pictures of these and not a physical item itself and that's because well I can't really afford one nor find one when I do have the money to buy one. Some people have actually dumped the ROMs from these cartridges and have made their own version and what do those look like? They look like this just a standard Game Boy game. So as you can see it's very very different compared to the official cartridges that are just absolutely massive. What I do like about these is the creators have gone through the effort to even make a custom label. As I mentioned there is many many versions of the repair cartridges so which ROM did they use? They use the highest end one that has all the features. Now, I'm not going to use the original Game Boy I'm going to use my IPS backlit Game Boy which has a preamp installed and has USB-C capabilities. If you want to see me making that up in the top right now is a video of it. Let's pop in this custom test cartridge and check out these options and what Nintendo would have wanted us to do to test the Game Boy. So as you can see it has a nice Game Boy test menu with the first option being the auto test that just performs all all other tests. You have the screen test which obviously checks the screen. You got a controller test which tests the button, a scroll test which is a bit weird and a sound test to test the speaker. What I thought was weird is you can't use the d-pad to move and I actually thought this was broken when I first put it in but it turns out no you have to press select to move the arrow and then press A to start any of the tests which is just very weird. I don't know why that would be. So as you can see I am flicking through the options now but let's just go with the auto test since that covers everything and we'll just go over them as we do it. So the first thing that is going to do in the auto test is a RAM test which funny enough isn't actually an option by itself so the only way to do it is with the auto test. I'm not entirely sure how this works if you let me know in the comments below. I assume this cartridge sends some information to the RAM then requests it back and checks that what it's sent is got what it's received. Move on to the next test. This test will be the screen test and it automatically changes to three patterns every three seconds. As you can see it gives a nice chessboard pattern. This is used to check for deficiencies in the screen, any dead pixels. Obviously it looks a lot better on the IPS screen. We'll definitely check these out on the original Game Boy DMG also, don't worry. The next test it moves to is the button test and funny enough, because I've customised my IPS screen colour, it's not supposed to be purple but it is in this one. So let's press the button and as you can hear it also gives you a nice little beep to let you know that the button has been pressed and as you can see as I press the buttons it highlights them and puts them on the screen on the Game Boy in the screen, screenception. If you are enjoying this video so far don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. And the next test is a scroll test and you actually have to press B for this, not sure why and I'm not sure what the scroll test is trying to achieve. How would you define it as smooth? So let's move on to the sound. As you can hear the sound is a continuous tone, quite annoying but as you go through the test it does a sweep down tone which I quite like and a sweep up tone. I'm assuming this is tech in the highs and the lows. There's another continuous tone and there's a short beep so let me replay that so you didn't miss it. And then after that there was another short static noise so let me repeat that also so you don't miss it. And with that done the sound section is complete and that is actually the end of all the auto tests. If any of these fail you can do your work and then just start from the specific test you would like. Now let's just try those screen tests on the original Game Boy because I want to see what it looks like. So it looks really good in the IPS kit but what about an original Game Boy? Again I tried to press with the d-pad but you have to press select. <laughs> I keep doing that I don't know why. So let's start with the screen test and yeah as you can see it looks looks more prominent like it's actually testing something compared to the IPS screen. You can obviously play with your contrast as well just to make sure that there is no dead pixels or lines. And that is really it. So if you had an original service center Game Boy cartridge you would have all these features providing it the latest model and if you don't and you just bought one of these you'll basically get a custom cartridge but what's in the cartridge? So open it up and it looks like it's just a homebrew Game Boy cartridge which you can put any ROM on. It doesn't actually have to be the repair center cartridge. You could put anything on as you would like because it is a homebrew Game Boy cartridge. In this case someone took the hit, brought the official repair center Game Boy cartridge, the highest model with all features, ripped the ROM from it and has put it onto cartridges like this. What I thought was interesting is even all the components are hand sold 
soldered you can tell by the soldering that has been done rather than them being machine placed so these are literally built by hand so let's put it back into its case and to put in the Phillips screw don't know why they would choose to do that since all cartridges have the security bit it would have been nice if they just paid a little extra for the security bit just to give it that more official look but I'm sure they had their reasons for doing this and I must admit I really love this cartridge and I'll certainly be using it to check out Game Boys that I buy up to try and repair. Let me know your thoughts on this custom cartridge in the comments down below.